now you have this, you know, generation of people coming up that just literally can't pay attention. Well, you know, it's it to me, it's not just the attention span problems, but it's what else that means. Yeah. Attention span deficits because of environmental factors of overstimulation are doing harm on so many levels. Mm -hmm. So many people would be like, I don't really care to read a book, you know, so what? And yeah. it's just for the kids in school. And I'm going, no, if you have, if you are shortening your attention span, you know, the average attention span in the industrialized world is now eight seconds. <laughs> it's shorter than that of a goldfish, yeah. Time Magazine. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Uh, so all yeah. of us are harming our prefrontal cortex, which is going to be is where we engage in impulse control. If we want more self-control in our lives, we need that prefrontal cortex. And you think about what that spills over into, I mean, just going to church, listening to stuff. Totally. Hey, yep. here's a ministry video that's an hour. Oh, that's too long. I can't watch that. <laughs> you know, it's like you, you, you're going to have attention problems throughout your life. So I think that the, 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 the parenting if you guys are out there and listening to this and you have young children um, um i hope that you'll take these things seriously look into them because you know um building those those things into your children and good habits, good media habits, or good just like, you know, going outside and doing good things is going to have a lifelong lasting experience. But I like what's come out of this conversation as well is if you have a problem, you can fix it. Mm -hmm. So start today, just make those changes today and you can begin to move forward and reverse some of these things. Mm -hmm. Just nature and fun. Mm -hmm. it, it's not that complicated. Mm -hmm. Be outdoors, be together, and have a happy time and kids come alive. Mm -hmm. It could be said that we're going back to extremes and that's so you have someone who's super addicted to technology and then the other extreme is no tech at all for five days. For someone who can't do that practically, is there a way to get there without, oh, disengage for five days in nature? Are you talking about children? Family. Children, yeah. yes, and then as as a whole, if you know, if I don't know anybody that can't unless they're just like they've expended well, all their vacation time. You know, you you go on a vacation, you go on a you know five day backpacking outing, and you leave the phones behind. I mean, do something, just try something radical. Okay. I'm not saying never use a phone again, but just see what happens when you do go. You know, we're going to go as strict as humanly possible on this and do something radical. You'll see the the fruits, and then that'll make you want to get back to your normal yeah. tech use life with proper limits i think maybe to address maybe what she's getting at is there are people where they've never camped that's true that's you know true. they've never like if you're like urban inner city yeah this is your life you know tall buildings around you you know you get you go through a metal detector go to school this kind yeah. of thing like the countryside is like something you've seen on the video screen or you've saw pictures in books yeah so what do you do if you're in that context because going camping is like what what like, okay yeah are, are you kidding me like yep. what two things to that and that's a really good point because we've got a, a an issue of access we've got an mm -hmm. issue of the underserved here and mm -hmm. i mean underserved in nature exposure yep and what they found in studies is in that urban setting the closer you live to a park the better yeah. your outcomes no, that's so a great practice just a idea. park just start with yeah. a park just like we go to the park every single day mm -hmm. we go for a walk in the neighborhood yep. where there are a couple trees growing and the birds yep. are singing in the, even in the city. So start small, yeah. but also I wanna speak to those who have the means mm -hmm. and can reach into those urban settings and help and and, and mm -hmm. mentor people That's into good. how yeah. to experience nature because yeah, yeah. you can't blame somebody for being born in that and not right. knowing. It's right. like, you gotta really, you gotta, you gotta help people along in that context. Right. So exactly. It's, yeah. Yeah, no, shout out to answer. Pathfinders, you know, that was yeah. my camping experience. They would take all the kids in the church, like, let's go, let's yeah. go for a weekend, oh, you know? That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, my kids are in Pathfinders and, and it's funny to, to see the kids, like there's tons of kids that have just never done that. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, wow, parents, get outside, <laughs> like, come on. But yeah, there's there's parks in almost every city. There's somewhere you can walk. I mean, if you live in a neighborhood, walk yeah. outside. I mean, yeah. Just to get outside, go ride a bike. Um, I mean, usually you can you can get within a a close proximity to some kind of nature, probably in a very short distance from where you live. I used to teach in the inner city, and there you know, I'm, I'm from Michigan, and we got Lake Michigan. It's one of the most beautiful places in America. People don't understand how beautiful Lake Michigan is. Sandy beaches, it's like blue, like you're at the ocean. You go to Sleeping Bear. I mean, I'm 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 right now from the Chamber of Commerce here, right? I, I just love my state, and it's so beautiful. And these kids 
were an hour and a half and less than an hour and a half from the lake shore and they'd never seen lake michigan wow i thought this is a tragedy yeah this is yeah. not okay and yeah. then they did have this particular uh urban school district had a camp site that was owned by the school district it was kind of mm -hmm. like a you know a getaway a, a place where you can take the sixth graders and they all got i was a sixth grade teacher my first year teaching and everybody goes out in sixth grade for one one outing to that to that place now these were kids who were really struggling and this is 2003 so this is before you know the, yeah. the digital revolution but they're from struggling homes fatherless homes many of them just in in those underprivileged situations behavior problems in the classroom as soon as we're out there it doesn't take five days yep they're coming alive yep right. and so that's just a beautiful thing because there's so much research this isn't just anecdotal right there are yeah. thousands of studies on nature exposure and the benefits to your brain to your happiness to your behavior mm -hmm.